Hey, it's so good to see you today. I hope you're having an absolutely amazing day today. You totally deserve it. In today's video, we are going to be breaking down the science behind radio frequency again. And this time we're going to be looking at does radio frequency cause facial fat loss? But before we get into it, there's something that I feel I should make clear about my channel, my videos and the content that I produce. I started my channel as a personal project so that I could document and track my skincare treatments so that I could see whether they actually worked or not, whether they were having any negative effects on my skin, what the kind of impacts were and just kind of a way to keep my motivation up. I never expected anyone really to be interested in it. And now I'm almost at my first 1000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane to me. And guys, I'm super grateful for your support because throughout this journey, I have learned so much, not just from skincare and research, but from you guys too. You guys are crazy amazing and I am literally in awe of you. So thank you. Like seriously, thank you so much. With that said, I think it's really important to clarify that I am not a trained medical professional and the procedures that I do to myself are my own personal choice. I'm not here to encourage you to do this kind of thing to yourself. I am in no position to be telling you what you can and can't and should and shouldn't do to your skin. That is totally your choice and I respect that. Now the treatments that I do do to myself, I don't rush into them. I spend literally months researching, practicing, having consultations, doing distance learning courses and understanding what the benefits and the risks are and then I weigh all of that up and I decide either to go for it or not. It's super important that if you're unsure about DIY skincare treatment, or you have questions or concerns, reach out to a trained or qualified medical professional. And if you don't agree with what I do and you want to come for me, bring it on. I'm a big boy, I've got thick skin. But please, if you're gonna throw hate at me, at least learn to construct some semblance of a grammatically correct sentence and back up whatever it is that you're going to say. Otherwise, I'm just gonna think you're stupid and illiterate. So now that's out of the way, comment of the week goes to... It's awesome to know that there are other guys out there that are super into their skincare and anti-aging and stuff like that, because then I feel like less of an alien. <laughs> if you want to be featured in my comment of the week, drop your comments down below, and who knows, maybe next time, it's gonna be you. Okay, so on with today's video. Does radio frequency skin tightening cause facial fat loss? So when it comes to radio frequency skin tightening treatments, it's considered as one of the safest and most effective ways to reverse the signs of aging. But does it cause subcutaneous fat loss? The thing to remember here is that every single treatment comes with potential side effects. Whether these are cosmetic, surgical, non-surgical, topical, everything comes with risks. Radio frequency is no different. Facial fat loss is actually a pretty big concern for many people undergoing radio frequency treatment. And the reason for this is that one of the first signs of aging is fat loss in the face. So what I want you to do is think of the face as being a balloon. When it's first inflated, the surface of it is tight, it's firm, it's smooth. But over time, as the rubber starts to break down and the balloon begins to deflate, it loses volume. And the balloon starts getting softer, it starts getting wrinkled, it loses its structure. Sound familiar? So one way that we can avoid this is by keeping the volume inside high. And this highlights why facial fat is a good thing. With that said, not all facial fat is a good thing. Anyone who has fat pads under their eyes will understand the stress that comes with eye bags. It doesn't matter what kind of topicals you apply to these fat pads, they are never gonna go away. Which is where radio frequency could come in handy. When it comes to the lower cheeks around here or along the jawline, as fat starts to build up, obviously gravity is pulling down. The less collagen and elastin you have in your skin, the more likely you are to develop jowls. Basically, facial fat helps keep things volumized which when it comes to anti-aging is a good thing. So now you know why facial fat is a good thing. Let's take a look at radio frequency and how it can have an impact on it. Radio frequency works by heating and causing thermolysis to the dermis and the hypodermis, all without enduring the epidermis. Now the epidermis is your upper layer of skin. This is what you can see. Beneath this, you have the dermis and then beneath that, you have the hypodermis. The hypodermis is where you'll find blood vessels, it's where fibroblasts are produced and it's where most of the fibrous tissue that gives our face structure is found. And by heating these different layers of skin, your body is encouraged to begin wound healing, which leads to collagen production. 
and collagen, as we all know, is the goal. But how exactly does radio frequency heat the skin? This is what's known as Ohm's law, which happens when the tissue's natural resistance to electron movement generates heat, which is relative to the length of time and the intensity of the interaction. So radio frequency sends energy into the skin, which as it passes through the cells causes them to move and vibrate and heat up. With bipolar radio frequency, it enters the skin, causing heating as it goes, and then what it does is it re-emerges back into the device tip and you get a loop going. In simple terms, what radio frequency does is heats up the two lower layers of skin, breaking down collagen, causing a thermal injury which then causes the cells to send out signals for the body to start the repair process. And this regeneration is what improves the skin over time. However, thermolysis breaks down more than just collagen. It also targets fat. Fat has a high electrical resistance and heats up approximately seven times faster than the cells of the dermis when in contact with radio frequency. And the higher the electrical resistance is, the more damage it's going to do to the cells. When the skin and fat cells are injured by thermal activity, they release damps. These are damage associated molecular pattern molecules, which send out signals to other cells of potential danger. And when damp signals are too strong, they can trigger apoptosis, which is basically programmed cell death. And this cell death can last from weeks to months, which will have you wondering, Will radio frequency destroy facial fat then? Radio frequency absolutely has the potential to destroy fat cells. Professional machines used in clinics will heat the epidermis and the hypodermis to approximately 55 to 60 degrees Celsius, while at-home machines will only achieve a temperature of between 30 and 41 degrees Celsius, depending on the intensity and the time it's used for. So by treating myself at home, I have come up with my own personalized routine that works for me and helps minimize fat loss. I keep my treatments to 10 minutes or less per area that I'm treating. On areas that I want to keep fat volume such as the cheeks, I will drop the intensity down to 4. But in areas that I am targeting fat such as under the chin, around the jawline and the lower cheek area around here, I will actually increase my treatment time to 15 or 20 minutes at the highest intensity. When it comes to under the eyes, a little bit of fat is great to have under there because it stops them looking so hollow. And because the skin is so thin around this area and the fat is so close to the surface, I always treat myself using a level 2 there. Understanding which zones of your face should have more volume than others is really important when you're treating yourself, which is why I would recommend that anyone that's considering doing these kind of treatments should really do their research and look deeper into it. So the last thing we're going to talk about is, is radio frequency really safe and what are the potential side effects? So when used as directed, radio frequency is seen as an extremely safe and effective way to address common skin issues such as skin laxity, fine lines and wrinkles, pores, reduce collagen and elastin levels, and improve blood circulation. Now, professional treatments administered in clinical settings are always going to give you superior results because the radio frequency is more powerful, it's able to heat up the skin more, but obviously that also increases the risk of facial fat loss. However, professionals are also familiar with face mapping, which means they'll be able to give you a more targeted treatment and reduce the risks of facial fat loss in areas that you don't want it. And while side effects are extremely rare, they can and do happen. Common radio frequency skin tightening treatment side effects include swelling, second degree burns, potential hyperpigmentation and scarring, headaches, and facial fat loss. So to sum things up, radio frequency really does have the potential to cause facial fat loss, especially if it's overused, used for too long at high temperatures, or used on areas where the fat is close to the skin. I personally love my radio frequency skin treatments, and I feel that they've played a huge role in the transformation of my skin over the past year. I myself haven't experienced any adverse reactions, nor have I experienced excessive facial fat loss. I have experienced fat loss in the areas where I specifically targeted for that, but otherwise I've had a great experience. However, remember we're not all equal and some people will react differently than others. Anyway guys, that is it for this video. I hope it answered the main questions that you might have and made it a little bit easier for you to understand. If you've got any questions about this topic or anti-aging skincare in general, feel free to drop them down in the comments below and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you're new to my channel and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell so you get updated every time I upload a new video. And I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. So till next time, see ya!